afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the AIY introduction session. How's everybody for I.O. so far? Everybody had a good lunch today? Yes, OK. As you can see on the screen, the name of this session is called the Introduction to AIY. Well, what is AIY? AIY is a new line of product Google makes for developers like you, makers all around the world, to make applications for artificial intelligence by yourself. That's the name of AIY, where that came from. Today, join with me, my colleagues in developer relations. My name is Bill Luan. I have Dushan. Sebastian joining me. We will give you a full introduction of the current AIY product line. So before we start, let me introduce my colleagues. So Dushan. Hey, thank you, Bill. Hello, everyone. My name is Dushant. I'm part of uh, Google's developer relations team in India. I'm really excited here to show you some amazing demos on AIY voice kit. But before we start, I'll invite Sebastian to give you a quick overview of what is AIY and you know, kind of you know, set the context for this talk. Thank you, Dushant. So uh, thank you very much for being here in person or watching this on YouTube. I'm Sebastian with this uh, very complicated last name. Uh, I've joined Google quite recently, just about 11 years ago. And uh, with my teams, what we do uh, around the world, especially in emerging markets, is we help developers and startups build better mobile and web applications. Today, I want to talk to you about AIY. But before this, let's talk about DIY, do it yourself. So do you know what this is? It's not a UFO. It's actually a musical instrument, which makes very nice sounds. But no, it was not invented in prehistoric times. It was actually created in the year 2000 in Switzerland. Switzerland is actually the country where I'm, I'm officially based. Well, that is when I'm not in one of the other UFOs, which we call planes, because I travel quite a bit uh, to visit my teams. Do you know what this is also? It's a window into DIY culture. Let me take you through a very brief history of humankind's appetite for DIY. And if you read uh, the book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, you'll know what I'm talking about. Our human ancestors were already building tools, as probably you know, weapons, instruments, using stone and wood. Now, if we skip a few generations of humans, we're still using wood to create things. This is one of my brothers, Matthias, and my sister, Lydia, um, some 30 years ago. And I'm sure you or your siblings did the same thing, tinkering with stuff or everything you could lay your hands on. Now let's fast forward to the, what I call the electronics age. Do you remember in the 90s how desktop computers, I'm not even talking about laptops, but desktops were so expensive? Who among you, show of hands maybe, to see who built computers with, their, you know, with spare parts? Yeah, I did that too, quite a few of you. And I'm the only one uh, who's too old for this. On this animated image, uh, you can see how I've used an overhead projector and a dismantled LCD screen to build a cheap homemade video projector. But then obviously, my mom got annoyed because all the electronics were everywhere in the living room. So she said, go outside, you need some fresh air. OK, so I went outside, and that's me reusing garbage bags. One dollar of garbage bags to build a solar balloon. It can almost lift me up. Not quite, but I'll get there one day. But the appeal of electronics was just too strong. So my siblings and I got back inside, and one of my brothers, the other one, Florian started tinkering with 3D printers, homemade 3D printers. This is my other brother, the, the one on the right. Uh, the, the, on the left is actually a photo in the museum. As I said, DIY is in our DNA from very, very early on. It's also in Google's DNA. Four years ago, you may remember a Google engineer from the Paris office, and I mentioned Paris because I'm actually French. Uh, and this engineer came here at I.O. to show the VR platform he had built using cardboard during his 20% innovation time. Since then, this has become, two years ago, what we call the Daydream VR platform at Google. Here's what's interesting now. The maker culture is all about hardware on one side, physical objects, and on the other hand, on the other hand uh, software. This combination of DIY culture with a hacker culture. You may have heard of Maker, uh, maker Fair since 2006. You may have maker spaces around you, and if there's none in your city where you live, then why don't you start one of these maker spaces? The great thing about this maker culture is that you learn through doing with your hands. You make mistakes, so what? Doesn't matter. That's a very good way to learn. 
to try new things and learn from each other. Figure out new applications with, that you can create with that technology. It doesn't matter what your background is. In fact, it's even better when you can mix and match different domains to find new applications of the technology. Now let's take a look at what, ha what has happened in the past few years. You have now have microcontrollers like Raspberry Pi. The cloud has become cheaper. Lithium batteries have become cheaper. Did you know that lithium batteries, their cost has decreased by 80% in eight years, over the past eight years? And I'm sure you've heard about AI, artificial intelligence, especially since yesterday, right? And concepts like machine learning, deep neural networks. It sounds complicated, right? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. And this is why, with AIY, do-it-yourself AI, artificial intelligence, that we introduced last year, you can have fun. Because the idea of this maker culture is, before anything else, to have fun. Using, in this case, artificial intelligence, we want to put AI literally in your hands so, you, so that you can solve real problems. Our IRY kits are open source. They combine hardware and software, and they integrate, integrate AI directly on the device themselves. The essence, as I mentioned previously, is, it, is to keep it low cost using readily available components that you can find almost anywhere on the planet. And the kits are very easy to assemble. Dishon, how long does it take to assemble one of these kits? 15 to 30 minutes. 15, 30 minutes. OK, let's say one, let's say one hour, because my mom's going to say I'm very clumsy. Thank you, mom. I know she's watching. Um, so let's say not more than an hour to assemble these kits. Dushan and Bill, right after, in just a few minutes, will demo some of these kits to show what you can do with them. So the voice kit and the vision kit. But stay with us. In the coming weeks, and the coming months, there'll be no, more to announce in that space. Now let's take a look, and I'll finish off with this, at what some of you have, have already created. In this example, I'm going to show you in just a few seconds, a 16-year-old with no programming experience has managed to come up with the following use case. Let's play the video uh, for just about 20 seconds. Shop for New York Yankees baseball hats. So what's actually happening now? Yeah. Woo. So she just said done, right? Yep. OK. So what actually happened was that when it said done, it's just sent links to my email okay. after finding it on eBay. Oh. So it'll find results online, send links in an email to me, and I'm going to receive those. So then I can quickly click and buy something. So what happened here with uh, Lawrence and the uh, high school kid was shopping for a product. I don't know if you heard at the, at the beginning. I'm shopping for some baseball caps. And was searching on eBay for re re result, results, which were emailed uh, right after when the device had done. So let me take you through the code. It's just if you heard at the, at the beginning. I'm shopping for some baseball caps. And was searching on eBay for re re result, results, which were emailed uh, right after when the device had done. So let me take you through through the code. It's just if you heard at the, at the beginning, I'm shopping for some baseball caps. And we're searching on eBay for re re result, results, which were emailed uh, right after. Through the code. It's just if you heard at the, at the beginning, I'm shopping for some baseball caps. Through the code. It's just if you heard at the, at the beginning, I'm shopping for some baseball cap. You may remember in the video that all the results are sent over email. Here's the code. We're going we're gonna to go through each result, the first three lines of the code up there, and format all this in an email. You can recognize, right? Even if you're not an experienced programmer, like something like from to subject line. That's it. Nothing more. The last thing we do is just connect to the server, the email server, and just send the, send the email and get the device to say, done. That's it. There's nothing more. You can literally copy and paste that code. It will work. Now, it's your turn to do things with AIY. And if you're not inspired enough, I have uh, Duchamp now to come on stage to do a demo with the, with the voice kit. So thank you very much for listening. And welcome Duchamp back on stage. Thank you, Sebastian. My name is Dushant. I'm part of a developer relations team at Google. And like everybody, we all are excited about the possibility of AI as in front of us. Correct? This only becomes more meaningful 
and more impactful when all of us kind of you know, have an access to this wonderful platform. At Google, we have been sharing our work and advancement in the field of artificial intelligence by building products, sharing through our research papers, and now with the AIY kids, we are taking to even more people in a more playful way. Yet, it is, uh, it is strong enough for you to solve some really good problems. So let's see how we can, we can kind of you know, solve some of those things. And when we are thinking about this, this kit together, we're thinking, you know, what makes sense, correct? What would be a, a right way of putting this in front of people? And of course, voice was one of the things that was very evident, correct? We all like talking. Imagine if we have a power of playing around with a voice, how fun it would be. Uh, Sundar did mention in the keynote yesterday about WaveNet, correct? How you can kind of, you know, create different, different voices. So, in this demo, I'm just going to talk about the capabilities of AIY Kit with Cloud Speech API and Google Assistant API. But of course, there's much more than this. So the Voice Kit was launched sometime mid last year, if I'm not wrong. And uh, it had got a lot of attention. The Voice Kit basically has a combination of few software and some of the hardware there. It was marketed along with Raspberry Pi Foundation to kind of you know, see what are the feedback we can get from the existing maker community and try to improve our offering. We launched the second version of Voice Kit sometime in January to kind of you know, get incorporate all those feedbacks and make it all in a one box component kit. So that's what you get today. If you, if you go to AIY website and, and look at Voice Kit, this is what uh, you know, you'll probably find there. But what does a kit contain, correct? From a hardware point of view, it has uh, you know, Raspberry Pi Zero. It has voice bonnet, which is basically a piece of hardware which understands you know, a lot of, or which does a lot of audio processing for yourself, for you. And the voice bonnet has different, different component. It has a mic, it has a codec, you know, microcontroller, general purpose input output, and an arcade button to basically kind of give you visual indication of what's happening with your voice kit at any point of time. And, and from a software point of view, it basically runs on Raspbian Linux, correct? Uh, it uses Google Assistant API and uses Cloud Speech API. But of course, you could, you could do a bunch of things with that. This is just scratching the surface of the voice kit. So how can you get started? Very straightforward. Uh, think of it as a three-step process. Step one is in terms of assembling the kit. Step two is setting up your device. And step three is now you have set up everything, you could kind of you know, go ahead and build some of solution by yourself. So if you open the kit, this is what it looks like. Um, first thing, ensure you have all the right components. Like you have a cardboard, all the different, different hardware that is mentioned on the website. Just verify that you have all those components ready with you before you start assembling together. Once you verify, the next step what you need to do is kind of build an engine. Think of it as a building a car, correct? You're building an engine. So putting Raspberry Pi and your voice bonnet together. Once you kind of you know, put the engine together, then now you're building a chassis, correct? So it's a kind of you know, uh, you know, structure for your car or structure for your, for your voice kit. So you basically take it. Uh, you know, cardboard and kind of you know, give it a structure of a speaker. Once you build the cardboard, then you put the engine inside it. You put the kind of you know, Raspberry Pi and voice bonnet inside it. That's it. Correct. It's super easy, super fun. Uh, for me, when I tried first time, it took somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. But I'm sure you guys are you know, much, much you know, advanced than me, and you could kind of you know, try to uh, you know, even faster. The key here is not to do fast, but kind of you know, do it in a nice, fun way out of it. So yeah, that's it. You, you kind of you know, assembled your voice kit. A step two is basically set up your device, correct? At this point of time, what you want to do is that now I have my device or my voice kit is more or less kind of you know, in a nice shape and form. Let me kind of you know, give a voice to it. Let me see if everything is working fine. So I have a already built uh, voice kit here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, switch back to my voice kit and see uh, if everything is working fine there. 
So before you start, you want to kind of know, uh, ensure that you have everything running for you. Um, so things like, let's say you're connected to network. This could be either a wired network or a wireless network. Or if you're tethering from your phone, just ensure you have a, some sort of in connection because a voice needs to connect it to a voice kit needs to be connected to internet. It's using under it's using Google Assistant and Speech API for recognition purpose. Let me see if I'm online. Cool. Looks like I'm all set from an internet point of view. Let's see if my speakers, if my uh, audio is working fine or, or the kit audio is working fine. Front, center. Seems OK. Um, let me see if it recognizes my voice. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Seems to be OK. So now I'm, I'm almost set, correct? Uh, the good thing is that VoiceKit comes with some of the pre-built demos as well. It's good to kind of you know, see if those, those are also working fine before you kind of you know, start building yourself. Um, so if you go to the Py directory and look at Python voice uh, examples, which is here. And I'm just going to try this library demo. Hey, Google, what's the time right now? It's 1.50. Thank you. So, so you could try a bunch of things. I mean, what I was doing is that I was just testing if things are working fine. Now, of course, you could, at this point of time, ask a bunch of other questions. Now, things are kind of, you know, seems to be OK. Let me see if I could. Uh, if, if we can build something or not. Let me go back to presentation. Can we go back to slides? Yeah. So our device was kind of, you know, so it's, it's always good to see if, uh, if device is working fine before you kind of you know, start building by yourself. I have built a, a typical shopping experience. Uh, hopefully, it should work, work fine. But let's see, uh, given my the setup was not really uh, you know, up to the mark. But let's give it a one more shot. Can we switch to uh, demo? So Sebastian did show, correct? Uh, he was showing the code, which was mostly about uh, you know, kind of you know, giving a command to a voice assistant saying that, OK, shop for something. And then it was trying to identify a text, and it was calling um, one of the API, which was from eBay, I believe, and then trying to basically fetch some of the result and send it as an email. I've tried to mimic similar behavior. And let's see if I could, if demo gods are with me. So what I'm doing at this point of time, I'm just going to ask for maybe shop for something, correct? Uh, there's a Mother Day is coming up, Mother's Day is coming up, and I won't be in time for it. And I want to send something to my mom. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, what could be an interesting thing? Apparently, you know, the smartwatch is a big thing. So I thought, OK, maybe let me kind of you know, gift her a smartwatch. Um, so let's see if I can find a smartwatch using a, my voice kit. Hey, Google, shop for smartwatch. Cool. Thank Done. You. So if you look at what it did, it, it basically kind of you know, recognized my uh, you know, voice or my command. And it kind of you know, connected to that particular service and displayed some of those smartwatches available for me to kind of you know, purchase it. Now, at this point of time, I could take this output and either send an email like what Sebastian was mentioning. Or if I have a smart display device, I could basically uh, you know, post it there or kind of you know, give a nice visual uh, you know, list that, OK, these are some of the things. Or I could kind of engage in a little bit more conversation with that. Uh, can we move back to slides? 
But there are tons of things you could do that, correct? What I was trying to emphasize here is that, you know, there's a lot of things possible with the, with the voice that you could play around with it. You could also not just look at a software as, as a one side of it, but you could also experiment with some of the things on hardware. Um, so let's say we have seen people kind of you know taking the old toys and, and kind of you know putting the voice kits or, or some of the other AI kits into it and, and revive the bodies or kind of you know bring life to those toys. We have seen people kind of you know build customized shells for, for voice kits. There are people who have kind of done device remix, so kind of you know giving voice and, and kind of you know vision to a Roomba vacuum cleaner. So you could tell them, okay, no, don't go to this side of a house, but go to the different side of house section. Or you could kind of you know, create completely custom voice actions. Um, so tons of things is possible. If you if you want to know more about what is there, you could you could kind of you know, follow us on 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 Instagram or a Twitter or follow the discussion on, on Reddit with AIY projects. With that. I'll invite Bill to know more about uh, what's happening on uh, Vision Kit. Thank you. Thank you, Dushan. Is more is OK? All right, let me continue with the second product line in the ARY uh, product family, which, as you can see, is the Vision Kit. The Vision Kit is a relatively new product, and uh, it's just being released. Uh, end of last year, and we had a new version update uh, the first quarter of this year. Uh, so the latest version is 1.1, as you can see, launched in December of uh, last year. It has the latest Raspberry Pi Zero and the WH, the header, it's soldered on the board. So the, uh, it doesn't have the problem in the early version that you have to solder the pins yourself. It's much easier. It comes with the uh, Raspberry Pi camera version 2, and the Google made the Vision Bonnet circuit board. And that's where all the software, hardware, artificial intelligence, where Google put into the product. Uh, it's on the Vision Bonnet board. The most unique things of this, this particular product, it, it doesn't require you to connect to the internet. You can work with a vision recognition software on the box by itself alone. So before we start, let's go through the list of materials that Dushan did for the, the voice kit, a similar thing. In terms of the hardware, as I mentioned, it has the latest Raspberry Pi Zero board uh, and the camera. And the Google produced this Vision Bonnet. This Vision Bonnet circuit board contains the Intel uh, vision recognition processor, which has all the computing power to help you do the vision recognition. In addition to that, it has the camera support, um, and it has the connections to the Raspberry Pi uh, cable connector. Uh, it also has the general purpose input output, so called GPIO uh, connector, allow you to do more things, which I'm going to cover shortly. And uh, also, it has the, uh, the crypto chip on board, help you to encrypt the signals, okay, to add more securities uh, in terms of the application. Then on the software side, um, and also has the button, as well as the cardboard form, allow you to fold into the device. On the software side, the operating system is the same. It runs on the Linux Raspbian operating system. We include a TensorFlow, the so-called Inception, and uh, mobile net software. It's on the device, which allow you to build AI models uh, to work with this device to do applications in AI. It has the built-in software for facial recognition, as well as the general object recognition. So all this software is on the device. You're ready to use. And uh, uh, in terms of its component, let me get into a bit more detail because this is a rel relatively new product. On the hardware level, at the bottom, which is the Raspberry Pi Zero with the head, soldered on, as I said. The Raspberry Pi Zero has the built-in Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth support. So you can connect the internet if you want uh, without a cable uh, with Wi-Fi connects to the internet. It has a GPIO connection, which allows it to connect uh, directly with a flex cable to the Google Vision Bonnet uh, circuit board. That circuit board with additional flex cable connects to the Pi camera, as well as the additional accessories like the LED and the push button and the uh, buzzer. There's a piezo buzzer on the device that as your application uh, uh, necessary, you can have it generate sound. Then on the software side, uh, 
it runs on the same uh, Raspberry uh, uh, Linux Raspberry operating system, and the program runs is all in Python code. So it has the Python uh, interpreter on top of that. And the Google, the software we put together, contain three uh, different modules, if you will, in terms of uh, the vision process. The first is the TensorFlow uh, uh, module that does the vision inception. Second, it has the facial detection software. And the third, it has the object detection software. So with these software on board and with all this hardware, and you, through the API calls, write your applications uh, interface with these components. So this is how everything put together. OK? And then let me go through the same process to Sean mentioned in terms of the uh, voice kit. So first is you assemble it. In terms of assemble, very similar. You bought the box. It has these uh, parts, cardboard or whatever. As you can see on the screen, in terms of the process building, it's relatively easy. You basically hook up the Raspberry Pi with the Vision Bonnet cable, with that orange color cable, hook them together, stack them together, and then fold the car box, insert this module into the middle, almost like you put the engine in the car, as Dushan mentioned, right? Hook up the button, and that's it. Uh, I can build this thing. First time I build it, it's about 40 some minutes. Second time I build it, it took me only 20 minutes. So it's very simple. In fact, uh, I have a product for myself. I made a video tutorial of how to assemble it on YouTube. So for those of you who don't want to read the instructions, you can watch the video. Okay? And, but it's very simple, very easy. Okay? All right, so to assemble that, you know, congratulations. In less than an hour, you'll be able to just build a device like that. Okay, in terms of setup, this is very simple. As I said, this does not necessarily need to hook up to the internet. So the connection is all you need is just uh, a power supply. Have a power supply connects to it, and, uh, and you're ready to go. And because of the facial recognition software we're building to the device, after you power it up, it will automatically run the facial detection software. So right now, on the desk, I have this uh, vision bonnet with me. And uh, as you can see, the top LED blue light, uh, the, the button is lighted up. Now, if I point this to my face, as you can see, the blue light indicating the camera is capturing my face. If I show to the camera with a smiley face, a happy face, the light color of the LED will change to yellow. And if I'm showing a frowning face, it will go back to blue. So let me demonstrate this. Can everybody see, right? It changes the color. Now, let me say, this is not some kind of a magic. It is AI at working. So what happened, it is a software inside with the AI TensorFlow model with the facial recognition. Actually, I'm going to get to into a, in a minute to, to make a facial recognition software just like that. So there's not much of a setup. Just power on, hook up the power, and you can do facial recognition. This demo is called Joy Detection. Okay? It's a part of a product we ship with the, um, with the device. All right, so assembly, very easy. Setup, it's very easy. How to make your own solutions? Okay, there's a lot of software you could do. And uh, let me do another demo. So please switch the screen to the output of my other device. So as you can see right now, I'm running the Raspbian software operating system. And there's a window showing the software. Let me by starting a simple demo, which is the object classification. So I'm going to start with demo. And as you will see on the screen, on the right-hand side, it will have the camera, the video image coming, captured by the uh, camera. And uh, on the table, I have an apple and a banana and also a Coca can, just some random object that I put together. Now, as you can see on the left side of the screen, there's an output stream out starting putting on the screen, which is by the object classification software that we put on the device. Now, I'm going to explain all that in a minute. But first, let me do a demo. Let me just point this to banana. And uh, you should see on the left hand of the screen, uh, it will say, I, it detects this object, a banana, I hope. Right? Now, if I point this to an apple, not only it will recognize it's an apple, in fact, uh, it should say Granny Smith. 
it actually recognizes the, the type of the apple, OK? And I, already tried, I tried it earlier. I, I point this uh, Coca-Cola can. Uh, I don't know what it will say. But earlier, it uh, was telling me, I think it's a punching bag. Well, that's a punching bag. It's a red color. It looks like, looks like this. So let me stop the, the application and let me make this window a little bigger. And uh, as you can see on the left side, the first column number, it is the object recognition, it recognizes it. It says it's a banana. The number after that is the so-called confidence score. How confident the AI think this is a banana? Or similarly, to an apple, which is Granny Smith's apple, OK? So this confidence level tells you the recognition part, whether it thinks it's truly is the object it detects. These numbers, these kind of feedback from the software, you can use to make a lot of applications, OK? Well, let's switch back to the slides. So this, I mean, as this image on the screen, as you can see, very similar, right? It recognizes the object along with a confidence score. You can use this number to help you design your applications. So exactly what can you do with a vision kit? They are with vision kit. Well, number one, as I said, you can see already does the object detection. And it has a facial detection. This is all software built into it. And through API calls, you can leverage these. It has the automatic be able to take in photos, videos, and send an output to your application. Uh, it has the image classification, which you just saw, be able to tell Apple and Banana, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay? But most importantly, right, as the Joy Detect demonstrated, you can run your own AI machine learning software in this device by building your own customized TensorFlow model. Okay? Now, some of you may be thinking, hmm, how do I do that? Right? It's a bit confusing in terms of building a TensorFlow model. That's very powerful stuff. How do you do that? All right, so let me uh, introduce to you the, the process of how do you do your customized model. So first of all, the first number one, every machine learning model you're building TensorFlow, you're building a model to train, right? So specify and train your, your own model is the first step. And the second, just like any other TensorFlow model, you get the end results you do a so-called export model to a so-called frozen graph, OK? Any model, you can generate a frozen graph. But a frozen, frozen graph has its own format. That format does not understood by the Vision Barnett hardware, OK? So somehow, we need to make a match. And that match is then the next step is the so-called compiler. Google provides this so-called Barnett model compiler. You take the frozen graph binary code and, compile, and run the compiling through the compiler code, you generate a so-called your own customized computer graph. Okay? So the artifact-wise is in the end result, you're going through these three steps, you have a binary file. That file defines your machine learning model. Then on the hardware side, of course, we have a Raspberry Pi, we have a Vision Barnett. Raspberry Pi has a Python program. You use the API calls, you send this computer graph, if you will, to the Vision Barnett. So in the next step, you write some code, uh, you can look at our tutorials and, uh, and the example models. Calling a model function, basically, it send this computer graph into the vision barnet. In this particular case, the computer graph and the vision barnet, they match. They understood, OK, what's going on? And then you have a camera coming a stream of inputs. Those inputs are coming as a binary number. But because of this computer graph, we arrange these inputs into whatever the machine learning tensors, OK? which basically is a, a bunch of uh, uh, multidimensional arrays, OK? So now next step is you need to match this uh, tensor, a bunch of uh, um, arrays, to the image with your model. And this is what we call do this computing. Basically, the step is you write a, uh, a program, you have this uh, vision bonnet hardware, and does the calculation, and will send the signal to uh, the output. And here's the code, OK? How do you define your face object, OK? As you can see, the, the face object was defined with the bounding box, the face score, and the joy score. You write an argument code like that, and this is your structure. You send this structure, OK? And say, in my model, I need to have four. And these four numbers matches my machine learning model. And finally, in your application code, you just say, 
let me get results from this tensor. Where's the joy score, the, the face score, whatever, and, and you take that into your end result. And you can make a decision and say, if the, the score is based on some number, above some number, change my color line, OK? So this is exactly what you do in terms of using your own machine learning model with the vision kit. All right, so with that, let's talk about extend your project, right? We talk about the software, but how about hardware? On the AIY board, there's the red circle area I pointed out. It has additional GPI pins. With those pins, you can control output. Turn on the lights, turn on the fans, you know, uh, sending out, making some noise, whatever you could do. So with these things, you could uh, expand your project, and with that control on board, you can do a lot more things, OK? So hardware-wise, as a maker, we could do more things. All right, so we go through all these. We talk about uh, the assemble, how do you set up, and how do you do your own things. And most importantly, I want to say, to use AIY, the power of AIY really it is connected to many of the services Google uh, provide, right? Like Google Assistant, like TensorFlow. You want to leverage all these power of the service behind you. And AIY, we are part of global open source community, right? We, we publish this on GitHub. We work with Raspberry Pi Foundation. We work with Hackster. So uh, immerse yourself with the online maker communities around the world, OK? And this is the part of the fun of building makers, AIY. I want to mention, take this opportunity, tell everybody, for the audience here, those of you from the US, OK, you could join a contest going on right now, organized by Hexter with the Ministry of Education in China. It's so-called the Young US-China Makers Con Contest. The winners will get an all-expense paid trip to China. So those of you in the room, you are American makers. Please join this uh, contest. And uh, more details on Hexter uh, website. All right. The key takeaway from our talk today, what uh, uh, Sebastian and Dushan mentioned in their uh, part of the talk and mine, the key takeaway is resource-wise, the global AI website is this address, aiyprojects.withgoogle.com. Uh, the kits can be purchased right now at the Target store in the US. And also, next weekend, in the Bay Area, there's a Maker's Fair. Those of you who are in the area joining the Maker's Fair, you can get the kits from the Maker's Fair. Uh, learning using Raspberry Pi, using Python programming, this is a part of the thing that you need, uh, uh, you need to get yourself involved to expand your applications. And using TensorFlow machine learning model uh, to really build the power uh, of AI into applications. And that's the power of AIY. And finally, uh, to summary, and uh, I would say call to action, the things you guys could do, right? Everyone could do. Get AI kids and start building and have a lot of fun, of course and uh, learning many Google services. Right? Uh, at the Google I.O., we have sessions on Google Cloud, on Google Assistant, on TensorFlow. Please join in the learning a lot of those knowledge and skills. And get a lot of different sensors, controls, hook up to the GPIO ports on those devices. OK, you can build a lot of fun applications and leverage your AI capability. And lastly, joining online communities. Uh, we will very soon publish a global AI model exchange and put your application on that, share your knowledge with the global uh, developer communities. So with that, along with Sebastian and uh, Dushan, we want to thank you for coming, join our session today, start your AIY journey today. Thank you very much.